Welcome, everyone. My name is Von Giner, and I'm Vice President of Creative Bankruptcy for the Fox TV Network. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 20 times Family Guy made fun of Disney. Ho ho! See you at the game, Joel! Ho ho! For this list, we're looking at the occasions when Family Guy parodied or referenced Disney or its properties. If there's a Family Guy Disney mockery you find laughable we forgot, go easy on us in the comments. Number 20. The Shrimp Peter has a variety of careers throughout the show, and he and his buddies stumble their way into becoming DJs. Roadhouse. Roadhouse. That's nasty. That's nasty. What? 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 This place is awesome! The gang is surprisingly successful. However, when Peter is encouraged to go solo, he dumps his friends. Karma can be quick to strike, and he soon goes deaf. Joe, Cleveland, and Quagmire are less than sympathetic at first. Peter laments his fortunes to Stella, his co-worker who's also deaf. He claims that he would rather be on a Disney cruise. A cutaway then shows Mickey Mouse suffering through a bout of gastrointestinal distress. Ho ho! Ho ho! Don't eat the shrimp! Ho ho! This particular gag is a reference to an outbreak of norovirus on a Disney cruise ship in 2016. Hopefully, Mickey reached the bathroom. Number 19. Mickey Rabbit Thanksgiving at the Griffin household usually results in an entertaining level of chaos. Hi there, folks. Hand over the turkey. What? And while Peter and Brian being forced to find a replacement turkey last minute is fun, there's also comedy to be found on TV. Chris and Stewie watch the JCPenney Thanksgiving Day Parade, which is akin to the famous Macy's Parade, only with knockoff versions of popular cartoon characters. Along with Mickey Rabbit, a thinly veiled Mickey Mouse ripoff, there are several other non-Disney characters parodied. It's too bad we didn't get to see Donald Dog, Fuzz Lightspeed, or Randolph the Snow Guy from the movie Chilled. Wait, what am I looking at right now? Number 18. Disney Wakes Up Stewie has frequent trips through time, but on one occasion he meets a potential future version of himself. It is you! Uh, me! Oh god, I have so many questions about the future! Is all food in pill form? After following himself to the future, Stewie demands to know more about his future life, finding it disappointing that he hasn't taken over the world. The diabolical baby has several ideas about what the future should be like. And while beaming Mork and Mindy directly into your brain probably hasn't happened, future Stewie tells him that Walt Disney has, unfortunately, been unfrozen. And while there's no evidence that Disney was cryogenically preserved, his opinions on the state of the future have been long rumored. Uh, no. Put me back in. <laughs> Number 17. Firing Tink Peter is usually the major breadwinner of the Griffin household, somehow, but in this episode, Lois wants to get a job of her own. Mom, you can't get a job! The last time he left Dad home alone, he turned the house into a giant puppet. Although Peter complains to Cleveland and Quagmire about it, almost seeming to make a lewd joke, it turns out to just be a misdirect. Even so, Quagmire suggests that Lois work as a flight attendant, claiming that their spouses fly for free. Peter is excited about the prospect and decides that he no longer needs his previous flight provider, Tinkerbell. Sorry, Tink. Looks like I don't need you anymore. So what? You're just gonna dump me? Just like that? You knew what this was. Personally, we feel like it's another boneheaded move on Peter's part. Pixie Dust is a small price to pay for an unrestricted flight. Number 16. Eisner and Brian Brian's attempt to make it big in Hollywood is rough going at first. Keanu Reeves, wow! <laughs> you know, I, I don't usually gush, so you'll have to forgive me. He works a number of odd jobs, including washing cars. During one of these, he discovers that one of his clients is former Disney CEO Michael Eisner. Brian attempts to impress Eisner with his service and offers him a script he's been working on. However, Eisner merely gives him a Mickey Mouse hat, which admittedly does have Brian's name on it, and offers what Family Guy appears to believe is the typical Disney attitude towards creatives and its fans. See you at Disneyland. Bring money. Number 15. Genie Jesus After discovering that Jesus Christ is alive and walking around, Peter befriends the religious figure and the two become fast friends. I have had a blast. Oh, wonderful, wonderful! The two even sing a musical number about their friendship. The irreverent song features many jokes, both in the lyrics and through visual gags. These include everything from then-current political satire to references to films and pop culture. One of the latter sees Jesus appearing as the genie from the Disney movie Aladdin. You're a real pal, Jesus! Well, I'll tell you this, Peter, you ain't never had a friend like me! Peter ain't never had a friend like him, though, and if Jesus' behavior in the rest of the episode is any indication, that's probably a good thing. 
Number 14. Geppetto is kinky. Besides, I know how to deal with children, unlike Mr. Geppetto. Brian and Stewie are always entertaining to watch together, and their attempts to parent Meg and Chris while Peter and Lois are away make for good comedy. While the duo decides to chaperone them to the school dance, Stewie claims he knows the best ways to deal with children, unlike Geppetto. A cutaway gag then shows the woodcarver accidentally dropping his glasses and then pausing while bent over to ask if Pinocchio took a cookie without asking. Pinocchio owns up to it, though based on his positioning and Pinocchio's nose growing longer when he lies, well, let's just say Geppetto would clearly prefer if his wooden child were dishonest in this case. Yes, Papa Geppetto. I'm sorry. Are you sure you took it? Because, uh, I'd believe you if you said you didn't. No, I took it, Papa. I wouldn't lie to you. Number 13. Mini Models When Chris is discovered by an art dealer, the family goes to New York. Peter is characteristically impatient, wondering why Chris isn't famous immediately. Let's, let's talk turkey, Manatti. Look, we've been here all day and Chris isn't a famous artist yet. Brian reminds him that good art can take lots of training, and Peter wonders if Walt Disney also had to study. Cut to the man himself sketching Minnie Mouse. Disney urges her to pose nude to make it big. While Minnie does it, Disney appears a little too excited by his muse. You want to be a star, don't you? And take it off! If you can dream it, you can do it. But this version of Disney needs some less creepy dreams. Number 12. Mice in the Walls Brian and Stewie love to get into various business ventures together, and one of their most disastrous is their attempt to renovate a rundown house. Here's your hammer, here's your walkie, and here's your stud finder. Beep, 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 beep. Oh, oh, well, it's working. <laughs> All right, joke time is over. While both of them are so exhausted that they eventually quit dramatically, Brian is sick of the project the whole way through. Brian, pick up. Over. What? Brian, please say over when you finish talking. Over. What? Over. Do you see the wire yet? Over. Stewie annoys him frequently through his radio chatter, but even before they start, he has his doubts. Upon being shown the house for the first time, he points out that you can hear mice humping in the walls. One of said mice is clearly identifiable as Mickey. Hopefully it was Minnie he was with. Number 11. A place Disney supported. When Quagmire's feelings for Lois become public, Things between him and Peter get uncomfortable, and he stops hanging out with Peter and the guys. That's it! End of cookout! Get out of my house, and don't ever speak to me again! Despite their falling out, Peter is miserable. Lois, fed up with the situation, decides to take Peter to Quagmire to reconcile them. However, Peter recalls another time Lois took him somewhere he didn't want to go. Cue a cutaway to the two of them visiting Auschwitz, which Peter thought was somewhere built by Walt Disney. Lois corrects him, referring to Disney's supposedly anti-Semitic attitude and reported hospitality to Nazis. By the way, don't go on the train ride. Number 10, Fievel Mouskowitz. Fed up with Peter's shenanigans, Lois hires a nanny named Natalia to help raise the kids. Well, I guess it would be good to have some help with Meg and Chris, and Stewie if he's ever found. Tough, brawny, and stereotypically Eastern European, Natalia turns out to be a Belarusian assassin. When confronted by Stewie, Natalia claims to be doing her job in pursuit of Russian expatriate Fievel Melskowitz, the protagonist from Don Bluth's An American Tale. Okay, Natalia, level with me. Why are you really here? I have been sent to neutralize liberal Jewish dissident Fievel Melskowitz. Oh, well, the only mouse in this neighborhood is our innocent neighbor, Frank Maxwell. Melskowitz appears, claiming to be named Frank Maxwell, and nervously gets into his car which then explodes, though Natalia denies responsibility. I'm just regular old Frank Maxwell, and I'm very late for work. Good day, ma'am. Oh. Well, who should be lurking around the corner but Mickey Mouse, who sarcastically laments the Jewish mouse's bad luck, playing on Walt Disney's rumored anti-Semitic views, and the fact that Bluth once worked for Disney. Number nine, Quagmire romances Joan. Despite his reputation as a perverted bachelor, the Griffin's neighbor Glenn Quagmire has actually had a few touching romances in his life. Arguably the most notable of these was with the Griffin's one-time maid Joan. Everybody, this is Joan. Hi. Hello. Their courtship becomes a parody of not just one Disney movie, but several. They share a dance in magnificent Beauty and the Beast fashion, they go on a dinner date reminiscent of Lady and the Tramp, and they even take a romantic Aladdin-style flight on a magic carpet. But since this is Family Guy, that whole new world is a modern-day Baghdad plagued by war. Number 8. Ariel Wishes for Legs Poor Joe Swanson just can't catch a break. 
Recalling a parasailing trip with Quagmire, Joe is shown losing both his legs when they dip into the water, presumably bitten off by a shark or other sea creature. Remember, he even took me parasailing. This is awesome! It's like I'm flying! Cut to Ariel from Disney's The Little Mermaid sitting on the seafloor, wishing for a pair of legs, and Joe's bloody ones float down from above. What's even more darkly amusing is the reveal that Ariel wished for a pair of legs to eat rather than to use to walk on land. Watch out, Prince Eric! Number 7. Goofy in Hell Writing an article on teenage girls, Brian tries to spy on Meg from a ladder outside her room, but Stewie warns him not to fall as not all dogs go to heaven. Well, be careful you don't fall off that ladder. Not all dogs go to heaven. Leaving nothing to the imagination, a cutaway reveals that famed Disney dog Goofy is in hell. So, says here you're involved in the plotting of September 11th? Why? Apparently, he was involved in the 9-11 attacks, and Goofy happily confesses to it in his familiar southern drawl. That's what they get for supporting Israel! Yuck, 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 gosh! Once again drawing on the anti-Semitic rumors surrounding Walt Disney, Goofy tacks on his distaste for Israel. The real kicker, though, is when Goofy does his characteristic holler as he's pushed into the eternal pit of fire. Okay, into the eternal pit of fire you go. <laughs> Number 6. The Nightmare Before Independence Day Peter is picked on mercilessly by his sister Karen when she visits for Thanksgiving. Hey Karen, welcome to our- Bring it in, PP! <laughs> <laughs> At one point, Peter complains that she's as bad as Tim Burton's version of the 4th of July. She's ruining Thanksgiving, the way Tim Burton ruined the 4th of July! A cutaway then demonstrates an Independence Day celebration akin to the song This Is Halloween from The Nightmare Before Christmas, complete with many of the characters from the film. Weirdness, weirdness, patriotic weirdness. With on-the-nose lyrics lampooning Burton's particular style of spooky movies, the scene's funny whether you're a fan of the movie or not. And Jack Skellington's final line is disturbingly accurate. Fat chicks with black hair get tattoos of me. Number 5. It's a tiny world. In order to bond with Stewie, Peter does the one thing guaranteed to get a child's approval. He takes him to Disney World. And naturally, Stewie's over the moon about it. Oh, oh Disney World! Disney World! Disney World! Oh, 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 I want to go to Disney World! This gives the show's writers ample opportunity to make fun of Disney as much as possible. While the gag featuring Disney's stock prices as a slide is fun, the least subtle of these jabs occurs when Stewie is separated from Peter and gets discovered by two security guards. Well, well, a lost child. Looks like we've got a new recruit. Promptly kidnapped and chained up with other lost children, Stewie is forced to sing It's a Tiny World as part of a ride, playing off Disney's real ride, It's a Small World. It's a tiny, tiny world. It's a tiny, tiny world. Number 4. Aladdin 4. Jafar may need glasses. Season 6 shows a hypothetical future where Stewie becomes president of the United States. Obviously mad with power, the diabolical infant does try to do one good thing, banning direct-to-video Disney sequels, citing the fictitious Aladdin 4 Jafar May Need Glasses as a key example why. I mean, look at this. Aladdin 4 Jafar May Need Glasses. What, did Stewie not want to see the sorcerer go through the tedious comparisons of different lenses at his optometrist's office? Uh... About the same? Yeah, they're pretty much... Can I see five one more time? Five? And six. Yeah, they're about the same. But that's not the last we see of him. We get a follow-up in a later season with Aladdin 5, Jafar Answers the Census, in which Jafar lamely describes his personal income and how unsure he is of his sexuality. Personally, we'd love to see more sequels. Where's Aladdin 8, Jafar Goes to the Supermarket, or Aladdin 17, Jafar Applies for a Bank Loan? Are you gay, straight, or not sure? Uh, why are you asking me this? It's just... I, I don't I don't write the questions. I know, it just seems a little personal. Yeah, I, I understand. You're, you're free not to answer it if that's your choice. No, 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 it's okay. You can put not sure. Number 3. Peter's face transforms into Mickey's. In one of the series' early episodes, Joe Swanson and his family move in next door to the Griffins. Joe, you have to meet our new neighbor, Lois Griffin. It's a pleasure, Lois. Who's the little guy? This is Stewie. Honey, say hi to Mr. Swanson. You will bow to me. Although Peter doesn't make the best first impression, he later tries to be nice to Joe in order to get him to fill in on his company's softball team. They play on their neighbor's company softball team like this Saturday. Eh? What do you say, neighbor? Sounds like fun. Joe voices an interest, thinking it would be a good time, to which Peter emphatically agrees it's almost too good a time. 
Peter's head then morphs into Mickey Mouse's, and he delivers Mickey's signature laugh. Well, that's one way to comment on Disney's notoriously draconian attitude towards copyright infringement. Hey, so much fun it should be illegal. Like copyright infringement. Ho ho! See you at the game, Joel! Ho ho! Number 2. Disney Reboots Given that Fox, the network that airs Family Guy, was sold to Disney in 2019, it only makes sense that the show would become more overt in their parodies of the company. In the season 18 episode, Disney's The Reboot, Fox holds a focus group for potential reboots of the show. You have been selected to be part of a focus group that could affect one of America's most beloved television shows, Family Guy. Although the reboots themselves don't directly lampoon Disney, the types of shows they feature, from comedies about empowered moms, supernatural teen dramas, and lame reboots only featuring lesser characters, is definitely a dig. And it wouldn't even be the first time someone's called Disney's penchant for reboots a hollow cash grab. Sometimes networks will cancel a show only to reboot it with less popular characters from the original, while the more popular actors go on to find greater success in movies or ugly public divorces. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Brian and Stewie Visit the Disney Universe This classic episode features Brian and Stewie visiting alternate universes. The multiverse-hopping duo soon finds a Disney universe and are quickly won over. And it's not hard to see why. What the hell? What's happened to us? I don't know, but suddenly I feel all sweet and warm and fuzzy. With a sickly sweet atmosphere, talking animals and objects, gorgeous animation, and a show-stopping musical number about pie, this universe embodies nearly everything we love about Disney animations. It's a wonderful day for pie. You can ask all the birds in the sky. However, Family Guy yet again brings up the anti-Semitism rumors when everyone instantly turns on and beats up Mort Goldman, which prompts Brian and Stewie to move on. If it weren't for that disturbing bit, we'd love a whole episode in this style. Doesn't seem to be a thing wrong with this place. Hello, everybody! Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.